Hey, Kyle, you bring up some interesting issues, some challenges that I'm going to try to tackle here. Um, first, I don't really agree that we can make a comparison between the Elan Vital of the you know, early 20th, late 19th century um, and pan experientialism because um, the Elan Vital was supposed to be some sort of substance or soul operating on the physical matter of an organism as if from the outside, as though it were some sort of architect. Um, on the other hand, for pan experientialism, the experiential or mental um, aspect of an organism or any organized body um, is not a separate substance, but it interacts and is, in a sense, embedded in uh, the material. Um, pan experientialism is part of, it's one facet of a process metaphysics which rejects the substance ontology of both materialism and dualism and idealism. Um, so it's no longer thinking of things in the world as if they were substances with certain properties attributed to them. So when we talk about what the greenness of a plant amounts to when we try to go about explaining it, um, a physicalist would say, yeah, it's the wavelength of light reflecting off of the plant. Um, a pan-experientialist would say that it is my nervous system's interaction with light and the plant that creates green in sort of a participatory circular fashion. Um, the green isn't somehow in the plant. It's not an, uh, the plant doesn't have a green essence nor is it simply a projection of my own rods and cones and the organization of my visual cortex. It's what happens when these things interact. Color is brought forth by my being in the world with the plant and the sun. Um, so to move on now to the interaction problem, um, experience for a pan-experientialist is not a substance or a property. Uh, I say it's an aspect of all matter um, to say it's, it's when we look at a material body, there's, there's basically two ways to look at it. You can look at its exterior, which is what we normally think of as its material aspect, and you can look at its interior. And I don't mean like, you know, the interior of this book is the pages. I mean, um, you know, a better example would be an organism. The exterior would be, you know, my skin. You cut open my skin, you, you slice open my skull and look at my brain. That's still the exterior. The interior is what it feels like from the inside to be the brain, the body, uh, etc. Um, so it's not merely a spatial interior, but um, the experiential interior. And aspect, or aspect, matter has this dual aspect. Um, so... How do the mental and physical interact? Well, in the same way that the past and the future interact, you could say, um, the past would be uh, efficient causation, which is cause and effect as um, we normally think of it. The past is inherited as if it were efficient causation. And then the future is um, experienced as final causation. So we could say that the past is is materiality, is that which is, for all, intents and per, uh, for all intents and purposes, determined for us in this moment, while the future is what we anticipate, um, the possibilities we can realize given the actuality of the past. Um, and so how do material and uh, mental aspects interact? Um, in the same way that the past and the future interact. They are both present, past and future, and influence one another in the sense that the past provides um, actuality for the future to work on by uh, realizing possibilities, um, by allowing possibilities to be realized in the present. Um, so the causal nexus then includes both efficient and final causality, and they're both constantly influencing one another as we become in time. Um, I was going to say move through time, but that reminds me, right at the beginning of your video, you talked about spatial and temporal extension. And as, as Berkson, Henry Berkson, 
pointed out, the space is extended. The time isn't understandable or conceivable in terms of extension. Um, it's it's more so intention. Um, time, you know, if we're going to divide it up, would be the subjective element, whereas space would be the objective. Matter is in space. Time, um, you know, matter isn't in time. Matter becomes and evolves in time. And Bergson famously said that time is invention or it is nothing at all. And I think the materialist ontology or cosmology uh, falsely conceptualizes time as if it were just another extension, an extensional dimension, when really it's not, um, it's not at all. Time is what allows there to be creativity and really experience uh, in the universe. And as soon as materialism comes to terms with um, time, I think it will also be forced or realize why it was supposing that experience um, or consciousness, when we're talking about human experience, could be left out of um, our picture of the universe completely. I think materialism will realize that that was not necessary as soon as it recognizes the um, true nature of time. Um, so hopefully uh, that all makes some sense. I'll leave it at that. Uh, thanks for listening.